Good morning, folks. Today we'll hit three excellent papers right up our usual alley, and each an Easter egg for a veteran observer. But we've got two space weather items to hit first, starting with our star and seeing the southern coronal hole beginning to depart our view. Recall we were expecting minor CME impacts, minor to moderate coronal hole stream impacts, and those have begun, starting with the tiny CME signature last night, and this morning we see plasma speed of the stream on the rise. As predicted, these are in fact minor, with only slight increases in the KP index overnight. We'll continue to watch those today. The other thing we're watching is for solar flares from the northern active region. It came in as one of the smaller and less interesting sunspot groups, but exploded in size the last 24 hours. We will be watching the umbral magnetic fields of that one for solar flare activity as it faces Earth over the next two days. It has been quiet thus far. I want to thank the thousand of you who jumped on our Twitter yesterday. It is good to be back there. Link below, Space Weather News at Sun Weather Man. We are going to try to keep the multiple posts per day going. Right now, let's head to James Webb spectroscopy. It's been almost a decade since we made the star water videos, but the abundance of oxygen and hydrogen lines brought me right back. For those who weren't around back then, the universe is set up to make water. Every galaxy, pretty much every star, and trillions of planets. Let's jump to the articles next. We've got an excellent one on the explosiveness of the aurora. They say it's basically like an electric circuit. You don't say. And this brings us back to Hannes Alfane, where when any point in the circuit is disrupted, the entire energy of the circuit is realized explosively at the point of disruption. Here, that would be the joining of the solar wind electric field and the Earth's ionosphere. Speaking of the ionosphere, excellent broad spectrum study on chemistry, solar and magnetic field forcing of our ionosphere, and within it, an implied confirmation of our previous hypothesis. You will recall from our videos and on pages 65 and 66 in our latest book, the sustained ionospheric disruption, despite weaker and weaker space weather over the last several decades, should be due to the fact that Earth's magnetic field is weakening. Here, they cite a 20% control factor of the ionosphere from the field, and that more than explains the sustained observations of its perturbations. Lastly, folks, an excellent look at the polar cap flow channels and the fact that these magnetically driven geoelectric dynamics are prominently forced by the dominant IMFBY conditions in the solar wind. For those who need the reminder, that's the magnetic angle of the solar wind, largely tied to the heliospheric current sheet. In the solar wind magnetic field reversal, aka when we get a polarity reversal in the interplanetary magnetic field. The more that scientists look, the more important this wavy electric field is to the space weather and geomagnetic conditions, which further amplifies our understanding of the galactic version and what it's doing to our solar system right now. We greatly appreciate your support. Check out our playlists, books, one-on-one -on -one calls, websites, all listed below the video in the description box. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.